Tuesday, September 2nd, 2014, and you're listening to Sin Boldly, the podcast, The Sign Your Name Project. I'm your host, Drake Comstock. With me this week is the ever-faithful Stephen Doss. Howdy. On uh, this week's episode, we break from the norm a little bit, and, uh, and we're going to talk about terrorism. No, excuse me, I'm from Texas. It's tough to say this. We're going to talk about terrorism and the rise of ISIS. Um, so or it, it, ISIL. Or ISIL. Or, or state. Or IS. Um, so that will be this week's uh, discussion. Spent a lot, lot of time in my youth listening to George W. Bush talk. I still can't. I can't say nuclear either. <laughs> I like Sydney's like it's nuclear. Like yeah, no, I can spell it. Thank you, dear. <laughs> but I spelling it is not the same thing as saying it. Um, so terrorism, America, and terrorism, mm-hmm. and uh, nuclear. Um, it was just you know George Bush alph- alphabet soup. So, in an odd way, speaking of George W. Bush, um, so this week we're going to talk about ISIS, which stands for the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, or ISIL, the, the Islamic State, State of, of Iraq, Iraq and, and the, Levant? the Levant. Yeah, I have the Wikipedia article open right here in my uh, second monitor, so I can make sure I get fact checking. I was making sure I yeah, it was, I pre- fact checked before the show, which counts as research. It's fact checking if you do it live. It's research if you have it open while you're live but have found it previously. Well, I've so, got all the uh, the TVs here in the uh, studio north going, all one of them at CNN. So I can see it in your glasses. Breaks. It's good. Um, so ISIS is a big topic, and the 24-hour news stations I think have de- dedicated 12 hours a day when they're not talking about celebrity nudes. Or um, Ukraine, um, celebrity nudes replacing Ferguson as the news story yes, du jour. Um, the the domestic pol- domestic story du jour. Um, they are talking about ISIS, and ISIS to me is, is pretty scary. Um, yeah. They are a hyper militant um, form of Islam. That is, cl- that they, not only do they claim territory in kind of very gruesome ways with you know beheadings and torturing captives and you know like really public be like middle ages stuff public beheadings um they also claim authority over all muslims across the world so it's not just that they are killing people that stand in their way or then they have been killing christians um they also kill muslims who don't recognize their authority which i would think would be most of them um I am willing to bet the of the roughly what is it seven hundred million Muslims in the world? It, there's a lot of them. I am willing to bet that a good vast percentage of them do not recognize the authority of ISIS. Um, in the yeah, yeah, um, and they're terrifying, and they are slowly gaining territory. Um, as I mentioned, through horrific means, kind of throughout Iraq and Syria. If you look at the, Wikipedia, has a great map um, that shows what they're claiming as of the end of August. And it's interesting, the stuff controlled by them is a good percentage of Iraq and Syria. And then what they claim is almost the rest of Iraq and Syria. Um, so they are kind of scary. Um, and the obviously the U.S. has been um, performing uh, limited airstrikes um, to suppress them. There is talk. We are starting to increase our troop presence in Iraq because well, of... And 350 more troops to go to Baghdad. Right. Um so there's that. Right now, there's hesitancy on the part of U.S. foreign policy officials to do work in Syria because you're you're having to partner with some regimes we don't want to partner with, mm-hmm. shall we say? Um, so there's that side of it. The Pope has talked about, to get kind of start to broach onto the theological topic. Uh, the Pope has said that possibly force makes sense against ISIS, um, and this is like peace, love, and dope, Francis that we're talking about here. And even he's kind of looking at this and going, May- maybe, maybe guns, maybe guns. Um, that th- That's a paraphrase. I A, he probably didn't say it in English, and B, I don't think he used the words guns, but m- maybe guns. Um, so, so Stephen, kind of 
on a broad level, what's your perspective on ISIS and this kind of slowly escalating force that's being used? Well, this, you know, harkens back to the days of, you know, Islamic Empire and Christendom, Mm -hmm. basically where your faith is your political structure. Sure. Most of the kingdoms in Europe long, long ago thought that you know, they were ordained by God to take over this territory. Mm. I believe it was, yeah, it was Constantine who, the story goes, he saw the sign of the cross and it said, in this sign you will conquer. Sure. Um, and, and you know, we had our own manifest destiny in the United States that, it, that had its own religious overtones that, you know, we as Americans were ordained by God to hold this entire bloody continent. And by God, we were going to do it. And we did. And we did. And we committed a genocide in doing it. Yes. Um, but, but, I mean, that's the, that's the thing is like, um, this is the harken back to the olden days where political structures was based on religion. And they're bringing it back and they're bringing it back in a very violent, in a very bloody way. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's even going back to an older way of doing war where you behead captives. Um, you know, it was a big scandal um, when the U.S. was rightly. I mean, we did torture people, right? And we ha- we are continuing to detain people. We are not without our, um, without our breaking of the Geneva Convention, shall we say. And we do weird things about how we classify people so that we can do terrible things. But we yeah. try to, like, skulk around about it and try to make it look like we're not doing it because we understand that, there's a value in treating people like humans even in the midst of war even if we don't live up even though we fall way short of that value and that is somewhat of a different discussion yeah. um but they are you know they openly beheaded a journalist james foley and they today they did the same thing to another journalist yeah. um i have not watched the videos i will not watch the videos because i mean these are not combatants in any way these are no. civilians Journal- these are civilians. journalists these are just, and, yeah. you know, you can you can see stories of they're they're going to towns and they say convert or die if you're right. Christian or right. Jewish or Shia. Yeah, they or are, yeah, or Shia are as they're they they're Sunni, correct? They're Sunni, that's I, what I, I, yeah. I think. That's correct. If not, it's the other way around. You talk, I fact check. We got this. This exactly. is an important distinction. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, so they are Sunni, Sunni jihadists. Okay. Yep, we, so you're you good. Be, if you're Shia. You need to be Sunni. Um, and, you know, they, they're they not a recognized state, so they don't fall under these rules that we have in place for when you go into combat with another nation. Sure. They you, don't seem overly interested in them at the moment. Right, right. They are not a nation. They are a caliphate. Um, what, you know, a long time ago we would call a bishopric. Sure. A huge thing of territory ruled by... A, theolog- a religious leader. Yeah, a theological leader. Yeah. A theological leader, yes. Um, and what's the caliph's name? The caliph's name is, of course, Ibrahim, because... It's a, good, it's a good name. Three different religions. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those where you have this quote-unquote state that's not going to ever be recognized, but also isn't going to subscribe to any of the rules. They are going to seize people on a mountain and just wait for them to die until, you know, the United States and Kurdistan come in and, you know, knock them back. They're going to take over a dam and say, it's ours now. And, and, you know, and then seize it, maybe blow it up, maybe not, but, you know, airstrikes, Kurdish rebels coming in, taking them out and moving them out of the way. Um, So it's one of those, it's a very tricky thing that, you don't have there aren't rules for war there aren't oh, there isn't a way to say this is a just war and i use the sure quotes loosely because it's not technically because a war is usually between two nation states and this is a ideological group of people well i, I think all war involves ideological elements as much as we want to kind of you know the the example of the of the the just war in modern history is World War Two, right? Um, and you know, I, I have a, a hard time with that doctrine. But certainly, Nazi Germany was doing some bad stuff, right? Yeah, mm. it needed to be 
you know, taken care of. That needed to not be happening anymore. Yeah. Um, how you do that, I, I am no president or military planner, so don't look at me. But, right. um, but I'm that, glad someone is because... Better better than the me. Um, yeah. But that needed to happen. But even still, even though there were clear kind of lines there, there was still ideology in that. Mm -hmm. um, it was, you know, an, a fascist way of doing things against a... Um, modern liberal democracy republic. Hey, how you classify what England and America are now and were then is a little complicated. But you know there was still ideology. Same with the Cold War. I mean there was yeah some other human rights issues involved there. But fundamentally it was you know war involves ideology at least mm -hmm. to get people motivated about right. power structures. Um, yes, because. You know, as much as we joke in the United States, it's really hard to get people amped up to help the oil companies, right? Because most of the time they're soaking us. Um, but if you wrap this in protecting democracy and freedom around the world, you can really get your people going about some stuff. And I think, exactly. and, say. and 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 this is the 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 way I always approach Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda, and um and it's you know, ISIS comes out of Al Qaeda in Iraq, um. Yeah. Is, Although I kind of has said they're not a part of us, we don't like them. Yeah, but Al Qaeda is a lot like McDonald's. There are franchises, and basically Al Qaeda in Iraq became a non-participating franchise. So right. they're the McDonald's that serves spaghetti. Um, <laughs> that's a Mitch Hedberg joke. Great, it's really appropriate for this discussion. I think um, you're having this big deep discussion. And you're like, it serves spaghetti. It's, burgers, it's the McDonald's that serves spaghetti. Um, but one of the ways I think about al-Qaeda and ISIS, is mm -hmm. they are taking doctrine um, and an extreme form of Islam and twisting it for their own power, right? You don't, as a random terrorist movement, don't claim authority over all Muslims if you are not slightly about establishing your own power and your own dominance. That mm -hmm. is not, that is not an unloaded theological move. You know, you have this ideology and this, in their case, this theology, but it is wrapped in power and it is wrapped in years, decades of warfare with the United States and with the West. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, coming just, you know, what, 12 years ago, you know, the Sunni what, were the ones in power. Mm -hmm. ba the Ba'athist party was... Sunni and it you know it gassed the uh, the yep. Kurds it did. it it did made certain types of worship illegal mm -hmm. um, and it's very hard to give that up especially when the kitties are playing um, but not when the kitties are playing but when you know you come in and guess who's now in power it's the majority that you which were oppressing the, yeah, which is the Shia yeah the Shia because and so you know, it's a I mean, funny thing about d democratic elections. Exactly. Um, and then on the other side, you know, they started out of Syria and that whole thing where... Well, the power vacuum that was created. Yeah, the power Syria. vacuum that was created when half the country basically breaks away. Yeah. And now there's no one to, to lead and you're going to have this charismatic, powerful force that comes in and says... You know, submit or die. Well, terrifying. I mean, not just, you know, charismatic, but terrifying. Yeah. You know, with you know black uniforms and masks and guns and hyper violence. Um, you know, this is this is old school terrorism. This you know this is not the the carefully planned um, strategic strikes of Al Qaeda from fifteen years ago. This is we're gonna go into a town and we're gonna destroy everything and we're going to uh, kill people who don't agree with us I mean, and then we're is, gonna leave. It just you know I keep saying this, but it feels like it's out of another age. Yeah. Um, you know, what did it's Obama... It's barbarism. Yeah, I mean, what did Obama say that I, ISIS, or he says ISIL, has no place in this century? Um, I, I, yeah. Yeah. But I, I keep going, you know, I look at this and, you know, ISIS is real bad. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if people realize this, but it is, it's real bad. Um, mm -hmm. But theologically, what do we do with it? Uh, is there a place in this then that 
theologically, not po- not politically. You know, yeah. our political system seems real well, real willing to use its monopoly on force, mm-hmm. and you know, to value that um, and value the times we have used force. I mean, we live in a pretty militant country, uh, yeah. or at least a militaristic country. Um, you know, us in 19th century Germany um, and the Roman Empire. I mean, it, it's a very milita- militarism is valued here. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, somewhat of what we talked about with the Ferguson discussion. But theologically, it, where is that line where force is authorized or is force not authorized? But what does well, that mean when people are being killed? I mean, there's two sides to this. Um Well, there's a lot more sides. It's a very multi-sided coin. But the big two sides are there's the complete pacifist, which is you try to help as much as you can without actually taking a life, um, no matter what. You know, Jesus Christ says, blessed are the peacemakers. And for that, that means you can't be someone who does not make peace. Sure. That does not, you know shoot that does not blow stuff up um but then you know you have on the other side there's people like reinhold niebuhr who was a christian realist basically saying you know in order to prevent a larger sin one must commit smaller ones and i think in this case the small sin would be blowing stuff up and then to prevent, you know, the larger sin, which is just having this place exist um, and go and, you know, do what they're doing and being like barbarous, sure. being terrorists, being just this horrible thing. Um, and for me, I, you know, I in college, especially I read a lot of Reinhold Niebuhr. Um, mm-hmm. I had to take a, a government political science major um and so you know i had to take a fair amount of political philosophy and reinhold niebuhr is always one of those ones that i went back to is like okay this looks like real politics yeah um this looks like a theology that fits the realities of the world Mm -hmm. that it's hard to draw a line you know because in the end there are bad people they're going to do bad things and we mm-hmm. can hold the hands and surround the ISIS tank and all they're going to do is run us over and we will be counted among the exactly. casualties. You know, yep. this is not, you know, it, they're not much like Tiananmen Square. Yeah. This is not a place where, you know, the normal, you know, I hear the phrase wage peace from time to time, which kind of makes me feel weird, but, um, but they're but, not out there the hearts and the minds of their conquered population they're no and they're not interested kill the people who aren't going to agree with them they're not interested in worrying about civilian casualties mm-hmm. um and, and and so the wage peace or the you know the lot of the traditional non-violent resistant techniques you know work from people like martin luther king and mahatma gandhi those are reliant on a structure that cares about civilian life Right. You know, what is, you know, if, you know, the police in Birmingham may have done some bad stuff, but it would, no one in that society thought, okay, let's just kill them all. I mean, when there were terrorist attacks against black churches, there was FBI investigations and trials and punishments. And like, even in the, even in the depths of Southern racism, you know, the Klan is an outlier, not the enforcement mechanism. Right. This would be like as if the Klan were the police of Birmingham, mm-hmm. right? So they don't care, right? And, and and thank God that was not the situation, that even in the depths of Southern racism, there was still a value for civilian life, black or white, um, right. to steal a line from Michael Jackson. Um, so I, I, I look at Reinhold Niebuhr and I go, that makes sense to me. And saying, yeah. yeah, I mean, there are under there will be unintended consequences of your actions, but you have to act. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you have to balance what is worse versus what is still kind of bad. So yeah. all war is bad inherently. Or, or it is incompatible with the teachings of Christ, according to the United Methodist Church, um, which I believe. I would. Yeah. I am a pacifist. I as, freely as admit that that I. 
you know, want war to be the very, 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 very last resort, and I would feel very, 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 very uncomfortable doing it. I, but that being said, I also know that at some point there may be a time for it, and yeah. this might be that time where you just, you have this. I feel really uncomfortable with that, though. Me I just too. because you know. Again, Jesus was the leader of a movement and not the leader and, and not a, you know, leader of a nation state. And, yeah. And, and, and so we get different perspective. And certainly the kings in the Old Testament um, who were leaders of nation states certainly used force as an option. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the end, all and we, we've talked about this before, that all of pe- everyone on both sides are humans. Mm-hmm. Whether humans doing bad things or humans not doing bad things, they're all valued human lives. Mm-hmm. And anytime you authorize force against human life, there's a risk and there's a concern, and there, you know, yes. you need to think theologically on that. That being said, even peace, love, and dope Francis. I mean, I have great respect for the Pope, but that's why I've given him a nickname. Um, mm-hmm says that maybe force makes sense here because of the nature of what ISIS is. Um, mm-hmm. This, yeah, you use the word barbarous, and I think that's that's definitely a place where they are. Um, one of the things that has come up, at least in my congregation, is some of what ISIS claims to be trying to do, that they want to come over and make a Muslim caliphate out of the United States. Um First of all, the United States is almost impossible to invade, so good luck with that. Um, mm-hmm. You need to take over either part of South America or Canada, and you don't want to take Canada in winter. That's kind of like taking Russia in winter. Mm-hmm. Um, so your window is closing for the Canada camp. I mean, look, we're a pretty defensible position with all of that coastline, so I don't actually think it's going to happen. But it is interesting to think about that that is something that disturbs people. Mm-hmm. When they hear that, oh, they want to come over and, and, and make us Muslim. And, you know, one of the things you always want to caution there is that, that no, that doesn't mean that, like, your neighbor who goes to the mosque, they're not like that. No, no. <laughs> this should go without saying, and they're they not like that. they don't want like to make you Muslim. They want to make you a very, 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 very radical, specific type. Right. Or dead. Right. And, and your neighbor pretty much wants you to not run over their grass right yeah. like <laughs> the neighbor's like hey did you get my mail because i was you know i my new yorker came the other day my new yorker came the other day oh can you watch my children for a minute i need to pop down to the store and buy a gallon of milk yeah. that's most of what your muslim neighbor is interested in exactly most likely it's like, like hey dave do you want to come over for a barbecue on labor day because I have the day off of work. <laughs> I have the day off of work, and I want to watch some football. Like, exactly. that's probably, like... <laughs> are you watching the C- World Series? The Nationals are playing. Oh, sorry, I'm in Washington, D.C., so... Note- notice that, you know, the comparison that we make from a Christian context is, like, the Ku Klux Klan or the depths of the Middle Age Crusades. That's mm-hmm. what this is equivalent to. This is not, like... Every member of the, although they claim, ISIS claims authority over all Muslims, I am pretty sure that most Muslims are going, nah, nope, no. That, still no, yeah, no, we, nope, um, I just want to have a barbecue with Dave. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, they might, yeah. Religion done badly is religion done badly is religion done badly. Um, and ISIS is religion done to the nth degree badly. Now, you know, we are talking about Islam because this is the Islamic State, but, you know, Christianity is not without its own guilty history or its own guilty present right. um, in how it tries to influence and commits crimes. And you know, this is not, you know, we don't want to draw a distinction that it's, oh, it's just the Muslims. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, we are talking about that simply because that's where the topic, you know, that's what ISIS is. Um, yeah. And, you know, yeah. I look. The, ever a Christian, you know, group, militia that decides to spring up and start taking over territory and doing this to people who aren't their brand of evangelical or whatever kind of Christian that they are, um, 
we'll, we'll talk con- about them. We'll, we'll talk about them and we'll condemn them. We'll that talk too. about how they need to be stopped too if they're doing the same exact thing just under the banner of Christendom rather than a caliphate. Yeah. Religion misused is always a terrible it's thing. Religion misused. It's, 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 it's always a terrible thing. Mm-hmm. Because it's t- it's taking what is inherently good in the human spirit and twisting, twisting it. Twisting it for power. Because it has deep influence over people. Mm-hmm. And so it is a real quick way to get folks fired up for whatever it is. You know, we do this in our own politics all the time. You know, you look at the abortion debate in particular. Um, but a lot of U.S. politics and the weird things that become religious issues, that somehow capitalism is a religious issue, and, and weird things like that. Um, my favorite is, you know, periodically gun ownership becomes a religious issue. Um, There's actually, uh, because I do frequent conservapedia to look for what people are talking about, there is a um, website, I think it's Tea Party Crusaders. Ooh, not a good word. It, it is, I believe their motto is, we are... Hold on, let me let me check it. I can totally find it because it's what they always link to. So we can call this a tale from Conservapedia. Pedia, Pedia, Pedia. Hey, I think it's important to balance it out. This isn't just over there. It's happened, you know, smaller versions of, you know, religion and done badly not, happens here. But it's still religion done right. We are Bible and gun clinging Christians who fight for family, God, and country. <sighs> Just. I don't, this may sound somewhat satirical, and I don't mean it that way, but do you think Jesus would have been a gun owner? Mm. He told them not to bring, you know, the only time... F- by the sword will die by the sword. Right. And and so, like, the one time, like, violence was done on his behalf, not only did he rebuke the committer of the violence, he then put the guy's ear back on. Yeah. Like... He's like, yeah. no, not cool, Peter. Not c- uncool, Peter. <laughs> You, you, you can be a sword owner if that's your choice, but those who live by... <laughs> I just, somehow I think there was a sword ownership debate within the... Uh, sword, but you have to understand... You know, that sword is really for hunting and for, you know, the purpose of sport, not for the purpose of cutting off guards' ears. Yeah. Um, on that note, we, should probably get, we have wandered a field and we should probably get out of here. Um, if you have any thoughts on ISIS, uh, we would love to hear them. Um... What is it? Sin boldly at nfear.org, uh, facebook.com slash the sign your name project, or at sin boldly on Twitter. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord and end fear by signing your name. Good night.